Looks like I'm up. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last time, um, we finished the first section of Case 5. Um, we kind of figured out who Iris's dad is. Well, we just found out his name. It's John H. Wilson, which is also the name of the doctor that died in Case 1. Um, and then, like, we have an inkling that Susato might be, like, she might know more than she lets on because there's a work of Iris's in the pawnbroker shop, but nobody knows the title. But then Susato was like, oh yeah, the Hound of the Baskervilles. And they're like, how the heck do you know that? Ginny came over for dinner. Um, there's music box disc belonging to McGilded. Eggert Benedict, we don't know who he really is, but maybe we'll find out later. So yeah, lots of stuff happening. Um, so we're gonna continue now. That was a very enjoyable evening, evening, wasn't it? Oh yes, Iris' cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholm's violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his Thorship's face next time we're in court. Oh yeah, because um, Gina taught us uh, stealing methods. <laughs> Naruhoro-san, could I consult with you about something, I wonder? What's the matter, Susato-san? It's about the telegram I received. Ah. The one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. I've... I've been summoned. What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me. The Lord Chief Justice? When? Tomorrow morning. What? Then we have to start preparing at once. Oh, no, that won't be necessary, Naruhoro-san. Oh, my eyes are itchy. I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? Might it have something to do with John H. Wilson's death? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. What's all this about? Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Dun dun. Oh, who could that be, I wonder? Oh, Iris. Good evening, friends. Ah, Iris. Hello again. Oh, she might come up to ask us about the how. Susato knows about the work. I'm suspecting it was John H. Wilson that wrote the stories all along, but then because he's not there, they're just like, oh yeah, Iris writes them all, but I don't think that is the case. Because she's never been on cases with, um, with Sherlock before, and even though she says that her dad wrote it in his diary, it's like, yeah, then he might as well write the whole book. Why are you here? I don't want you here. And Gina, too. Yes, Ginny's going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Ginny? Well, yeah. How lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. And then you'll stay up all night because it's caffeinated. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh? What in particular? All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Ah, uh, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques. We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. So what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see... I can't return this. Wait, what? That's that's mine. Oh my, however did you... I told you, didn't I? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I'd forgotten. Iris literally is a child genius. So anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really understand why you were aware it though. Ah, thank you. 
Well, I don't understand half the things you wear, Iris, so pff, rude. All right then, good night. Yes, good night. Wait, that was it? Actually, one more thing. Hmm, so this is your office, is it? What do you think, Ginny? I think I wouldn't fancy me chances with a loyal what lives in a place like this. Yes, me too. <laughs> Seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. You don't say. I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Converse. The manuscript. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time. Please. For what? What the heck? That makes no sense. Alright, I understand. You're not going to tell, like, a ten-year-old child the secret of why you know the- Okay, whatever. Susato is weird. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh, no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. You've made me feel awkward. I don't know what all this about, really, but... It's a story you made up, isn't it, Iris? This mental script or whatever you call it? Not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddy's? That's right. I don't suppose I've mentioned it to you before, Ginny, but... My daddy was Hurley's assistant once. His partner. Eh? They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is... is that right, mister? Apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. I'm not. And Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I study them and write my stories based on what actually happened. So, where's your old man now, then? Dad. He had to go away on urgent business to a faraway land and had to be gone for a very long time. So, I've never really met him. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Iris, this Hound of the Baskervilles story. I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts. That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the other cases, I mean. Oh? How? I don't really know, but it must be special in some way. Because after I'd written it and I showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've ever seen him like that. It pains me to have to say this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time, under any circumstances. Why not? It's one of my best works! I'm not at liberty to say, not now, so please do not ask me. Alright then, I will. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Windenbank, isn't it? Yes. Hurley said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my goat, that does. He's treating you like a child. I can't get her, like, weird accent. I'm sorry. It's mean. That's what it is, keeping secrets like that. You're keeping secrets from us too, so you're mean as well. I don't. 
Whatever. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. Eh? If he said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so too. That's because you're his number one fangirl. And you're wearing rose-colored length glasses, whatever. You lot are too trusted for your own good. But you can't pull the wool over my eyes. Shelves is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. Whatever. What? Hurley's lying to me. Then why would he have raised her since she was a baby? Dumb Gina. Oh gosh. I don't like her. <laughs> I don't like you, Jada. Oops, I missed her. Here we go. Your parents. I realize that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did have. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us from the moment we're born. Not even our mums. Then they wouldn't have carried you to term, but okay. But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Nah, that happens my life. I love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift some pompous idiot's purse. And that's how we all flow to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, ain't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes. What would be like to have parents, I mean. I always thought it'd make everything out right. But I haven't listened to what Iris just said. Sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Oh. I mean, if you know you never had them, you don't feel like you're always waiting to meet him. Wanting to meet him. Hmm. It's true. I do want to see Daddy so much. Oh, Iris. She knows the truth. She knows the truth. And she ain't telling her what a jerk. Sholmes is lie. Gina, what did you mean when you said that you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Well, he reckons he bought that manuscript or whatever, right? Oh, come on. That's obviously a load of rubbish. Why would he? Oh my, why'd you think that, Gina? It's simple. That story was really an old Windebag story. There's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, can know about it. <sighs> it's because she knew of it beforehand. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, it's so would it. Without telling you. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. do a lot worse than that, believe me. Bare-faced liars, the lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. You're a jerk, you know. I'm telling you, that mantle script ain't that win the banks. You'd soon see it if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust them, I do. That Sholmes is a liar like the rest of them. You're only upset at him because he, like, one-upped you somehow. You, uh... If I'm honest... I have wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have had hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be hard on, too hard on yourself, Iris. Oh, my back is cracking a lot today. Oh my goodness, look at the time! Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night, Gina. Bad night, Gina. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Because you feel guilty about everything, Susato. Oh, yes, 
yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night, then. Iris. Sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night too, Naruhoda-san. Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris' father. But also... The name of the murdered visiting professor at New Bay University. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Da 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 da. Oh, am I falling asleep? Mr. Narhorder. Mr. Narhorder. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. What's going on? It's the middle of the night. It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris' room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? She stole something. She probably took the replica disc that Sholmes made. Oh my gosh. I think not, from speaking to her before she retired. I received a distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfasting with... Breakfasting... Yeah, with Miss Susato. No, I don't believe the girl has gone home, but I've been waiting for her for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you'll indulge me, look out of the window. My dear fellow. What's this about? Wait a minute. Why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Windebank's pawnbrokery. Mr. Windebank's? Oh no. But that story was really no one to make storeroom. There's no way someone from what I've learned around the world, you know, once you could know about it. Sure, there is, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. Could Gina have gone? Um, what? What? If she doesn't believe it's there, why would she go in to look for it? What? It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Nadahudo. Sorry? Oh, no. No, not really. Well, anyway, we must investigate. At once. Oh, at once. Miss Susato. Or she went in there to find the other disc that was supposed to be in the overcoats. Make us return. The door to Windebanks. It's open. And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina, mustn't it? Or it could be someone else. Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly something is afoot inside. Oh no, they're gonna take a picture of us. Whoa, the calendar's all messed up. There's no one here. Oh yes, there is. <gasps> ah! Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes! What the? Has Sholmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Nadahuru. But. After them, go! Right. The F? It's happening. Blast! I've lost them. Over here. The alarm was raised from the pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back into Windebanks. Ooh. 
Oh no, are we going to have to defend Gina now? To be continued, that was a very short part too. Okay. Save my progress, yes, even though we really didn't do that much, but... Saving is always good. Bang! Ah! I'll be alright, Mr. Danahudu! Off of them, go! Behind that door. In the storeroom. Hurry! Oh, wait. This is home saving. Yep. Yep, we're gonna have to defend her. So someone else came snooping in to find the other disc. Ugh. From that moment, Windebank's pawnbrokery became a crime scene. Again! <laughs> Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. Well, no breakfast for us! <laughs> Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. Oh, yes. We asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Harry and Jenny were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Bruno? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, isn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, why examine when we converse? Events at Windebanks. Yellow Jello! <laughs> hey Smith, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windebank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, uh, yes, I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all of those police carriages pulling up outside a shop. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Winnebanks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out onto the street and I chased after them, but they got away. So, it was one of them who shot old Mr. Windebank, I suppose. I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh? Why not? They've arrested someone else at their as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. Ginny? But why? Well, the thing is... No! Ginny wouldn't do something like that! I know, I know. None of us think she did it. Then why have they arrested her? Because they need a suspect, and she was there, so they, she could probably tell them something. I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do. Yo, I was so sleepy. <laughs> I wanted to um, stream some Final Fantasy XIV last night, but I was just so exhausted from working out and work. And today I'm still exhausted. Oof. So where's Hurley then? Is he still there investigating the scene? If you really want to have some breakfast, 
It's not good for him to miss his meals. I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some news about Mr. Sholmes. He was taken to the hospital this morning. What? Well, um... When we entered Windebanks, a gun was fired and took a bullet. He took a bullet. Honey, was shot? No, no! It's, it's alright. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? Hopefully you will sleep good tonight. I know, I just want to like pass out and enjoy my Friday tomorrow. He He's at St. Sinners. Wow, that's a lovely name for a hospital. They're tending him to him. They're tending to him there. I must see him at once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. We're not. That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. To, to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. Injured, Sholmes. It was the two thugs who were in Mr. Windbank's shop. They shot Mr. Sholmes when we disturbed him, you see. It was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I, I just froze. Off to them! After that, I ran out into the street, but... Well, they were long gone. I, I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I let them get away. I think... That's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them. You might have been shot as well, Runa. On top of everything else, I... I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Susato situation. Where's Susie, Runa? She's still at the police station. Why? I suspect I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Mr. Sato stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sholmes, so they didn't get started until later. Ah, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to be leaving early. You should have let me know, and I would have come to stay to the station. Gina's arrest. I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were at the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? After all, they shot Hurley dead, did it? They? No, I, I mean Mr. Scholes isn't dead, Iris. <laughs> ah, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Winterbank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. And the storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh no! And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards... Don't tell me. There was no one else in the room? Yes, exactly. How did you know? That's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. Whoa! My controller ran out of battery. Whoopsies! Uh, let me get my Joy-Cons. <laughs> Whoops! I didn't know it was time to recharge that battery too. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well? Ugh, what can I say? I'm damned if I agree, damned if I don't. Want to read Hound of the Baskervilles after this? 
Yeah, I, I want to like see the BBC Sherlock episode after this too to be like, what exactly happened? Because I know it was supposed to look like one thing, but then it was like, whoa, total switcheroonie. It's not, but I don't remember what the twist was. I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment. But I can at least try to find out how Mr. Scholes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you, you know. Yes, be my sister, Iris. I can't just stand I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. I'm not sure how I feel about ta taking a ten year old child to the scene of a murder. But I don't want to leave her all alone here either. Alright then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh yes, I'd love to. Gina's at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Ah, I can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Then to the hospital we shall go. New location has been added, thank you. Oops. Hospital. Strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? The classic book had a lot of words to look up while reading. I like doing that when you read a book and you're just like, oh, new word, what does it mean? And then like you write either a little like note in the margin to say what that word is, or you like you have a post-it note and you like tab it there to be like, here's all the word like definitions of the words I didn't know. The only thing that sucks about that is you don't know how to properly pronounce it. Like, there were so many times when I was growing up reading books, I was like, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Like, archipelago? Who knows how to pronounce that word? Until you actually hear it. But I was like, archipelago. <laughs> oh, I know what's probably happened. Hurley was being a big baby, and the bullet wound wasn't bad after all, so he's been sent home. Hmm, not so sure about that. Baby or not. There's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Sholm suffered. Yeah. Hello, hello, what are we here? This war's off limits, no visiting, so what are you doing in here, eh? Well, I'll have you know, we're Hurley's next of kin. Eh? Oh, well, begging your pardon then, ma'am, sir. A little lady and a curious eastern gentleman. The great mystery solvers as mystery families. As a mysterious family, eh? If that's how you see us, I'm um, sure. <laughs> Where is he, Constable? Where's Hurley? I believe he's currently in the operating theatre, ma'am. Undergoing an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since he went in. Oh dear. Is it going to be alright? Well, it doesn't appear to be working, you see. The anesthetic, that is. Oh. I've, I've heard a report that the gentleman claims he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. Uh... Anyway, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back here for several hours yet. You see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave and come back later. Oh, poor Hurley. Uh, but I want to examine things. Yeah, what does this say? There's another sport on the wall here. Look, let's see. What does it say? Thought of the day. On seeing any vermin, calmly and discreetly inform matron. Oh, yes. They have rats and mice in hospitals like this that love to feast on all the medicine. If you don't deal with them, there's nothing left to treat the patients. Rats and mice? Oh, I see. That's gross. This is a rather old building, I suppose. But the doctors and nurses are all very good, I hear. I certainly hope so, for Mr. Scholz's sake. 
I'm like, it's a window. Why didn't they just say he looked out the window instead of this word? Because <laughs> they try to make it fancy and like, oh, look how literary I am. Oh, look at my big fancy vocabulary. I don't know. Crutches. I wonder what these are. Do you have any idea, Iris? Oh, haven't you ever seen crutches before? Let me explain. They're for people with leg injuries to help them walk. You hold one under each arm, you see. Ah, right. I thought they were weapons of some sort. Why would there be weapons in a hospital? I thought maybe a fighter had been injured in a battle contest and been brought here along with his weapons. That's surprisingly plausible. I don't think there's anything else I can check. Nope. Okay, so we move. Let's go to prison. We're back in prison! Hey there, Gina. Hello, Gina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! You still have the grenade launcher Holy and I made! I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for? Ginny! I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were think that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry. You would. Get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. You think you know me? Pull the other one. Oh. You came to our house for dinner, you ungrateful brat? <laughs> You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. And if I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. Just to see what I could lay me hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, but Ginny... I'll be in court tomorrow, they said. Some curve came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like. Said it was my right or something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. She couldn't be staring at me any more obviously if she tried. Why are you being like this, Ginny? Because she's a brat. You know what? I won't represent you. Bye. <laughs> Rot in prison for the rest of your life. <laughs> I don't understand, Gina. Why did you send the public defender away? He wanted me to sign some papers. Representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be rigged anyway. The whole trial. Came over. I don't care. Gina's so annoying. <laughs> They'll put it on me because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. You're, you're 17. You are not a child anymore. Oh my goodness. Calm down. Why do you think that? Cause that's how it's always been for me, growing up in the back slums, me whole life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, it'll get your mates dragged off by the coppers, or worse. I've had it happen to me before and all, been sold out and nearly snarfed on the back of it. Snaffled, whoops. Can't trust no one, that's the point. Soon as you do, you're gone to grass, dead. Then why did you come to our house yesterday for dinner? I don't understand you. Gina, listen, you're an idiot. <laughs> if you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could forget it. Ginny, don't you trust Bruno? No, I don't. Look, I'll ask him nicely now. Just leave me alone. What happens? Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbrokers. There's nothing to tell. I figured it'd pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. But the old bloke walked in on me and you know the rest. But why, Jenny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. 
Climbing ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and half the time you don't even get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? You either broke in for one of two things. The other disc, or Iris's manuscript. What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Don't give it a rest. What'd be the point anyway, eh? Nothing I could say would make a bit of blind bit of difference. Please tell us, Jenny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me. Don't be daft. You can't be. You, you can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. <sighs> and you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I've, I've told some unforgivable lies I have. What, what do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? Probably from the other murder trial. Unforgivable lies. What did you mean before, Gino, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're gonna want to question me now. Ginny, please. Oh, yeah. I want to give you this. Something to remember me by. It's an ugly cat. <laughs> A photograph of Prince? Of a really adorable cat. <laughs> Wait, it's winter time. But it's in... I found it in one of the pockets of his coat. Ain't no point with me having it. With Edred, it made sense why he didn't want to be represented. Not sure about her, unless they're saying she trusts no one. I, like... I get that she doesn't trust adults. But right now, I feel like she's putting on an act to really be like... Ugh, you can't trust anyone. I don't trust adults. Leave me alone. Because I feel like she's involved in some kind of deeper plot that could potentially be dangerous. And that's why she doesn't want us to get involved. But it's like, come on, child. You know we're going to figure out the truth. Especially since Holmes was like directly involved in this. Like, he actually got hurt. So we're going to get to the bottom of this one way or another. I wonder what a little pho photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat's. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Ginny. The white cat photograph has been entered into court records. Maybe there's something on the back of it. Okay, court record time. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Oops, that's not... This adorable little cat. I think it looks a little like Wakahai. I always thought that cats like to curl up inside the heated Kotatsu blanket when it snowed. Maybe British cats are different. Uh, ha ha! Chaos, that's dull. Look at the back of this print here. There's something written on it. Ooh. So, thank you so much for the 60 month sub! <laughs> Girl, it's your birthday. Your 16th birthday. I really... I need four... Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. Oh man, how does that song go? Uh... Cause, Cause the only birthday song that comes to mind is 50 Cent. <laughs> Go shorty, it's your birthday. We got a party like it's your birthday. <laughs> but hope you will well too. Happy Thursday. 13th February. Oops, this is I was talking. 13th February, 9 p.m. Article deposited one small box. Load amount paid, 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th April, 9 p.m. But we already passed that date, so... So this photographic print is a redemption ticket. 13th February? That could be significant. It was just two days before the murder on the omnibus, wasn't it? A small box? That doesn't tell us much about it, does it? Uno, if Mr. McGillard still had the ticket, then presumably he never redeemed the article. So do you think the box might still be present somewhere in the shop? Ah, yes. If it's something Mr. McGillard deposited, we need to investigate. Da, 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 da. Uh, Mr. Windbang in the form of some handwritten notes on the back of a photograph. Never watched Spongebob. I didn't. I, oh man, so many of my friends loved Spongebob, but I didn't. I couldn't stand his voice. 
It was really annoying. And people were like, oh, Patrick's so funny. But he just seemed... Like, the person I felt for the most was Squidward. I was like, dude, I feel you. Like, you're trying to rest, trying to, like, uh, relax after, you know, working your miserable job. But then these your two annoying neighbors keep coming up to you and ruining your life. And I'm just like, poor Squidward. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, um, I watched a couple episodes of Spongebob when I was sick and I was watching TV because there was nothing else to do. And I'm just like, it's it's not for me. <laughs> Squidward is a character for parents to relate to. Yeah, see, I was like in, um, in high school. Well, my high school friends still liked Spongebob, but yeah, um, I didn't, I didn't like it. <laughs> Maybe it was too young for me, but everyone was like, look, you have to at least watch this episode where Spongebob learns how to drive because there's Korean on the car. And I'm like, is that the only reason to watch this episode? And I was just like, eh. I mean, I hate Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs um, is a jerk and he's annoying. Plankton is funny, but yeah. Um, but Larry is G. Who's Larry? I only know. Um, oh, what's the squ uh, what's the squirrel's name? Sid Sydney Cindy Sydney. And then um, SpongeBob, Patrick, Gary, uh, Plankton, Mr. Krabs, Squidward. Yeah, that's all I know. The guy whose legs always broke. Oh, I didn't know he had a name. It's Sandy? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's Sandy Squirrel. Oh no. At least I knew she was a squirrel. Sandy Cheeks. Uh, I didn't watch until my brother was born, maybe when he was four years old. Mm. Yeah, because Spongebob went on forever. And then um, the creator, he passed and he was like, don't make any more Spongebob stuff. But Nickelodeon, being the jerks they are, keep making Spongebob stuff. It's like, come up with new shows. You can do it. I believe in you. Yeah, let's examine this police car. There's still a Scott and Yard carriage outside Windebanks. I never imagined we'd be investigating a case so close to home. Poor Iris. She's very upset by all this. I'm sorry. I was there. Should have done more. None of this is your fault, Bruno. So please, don't apologize. But I... It's the criminals who are to blame for all this. So let's investigate and work out how to catch them. Yes, you're right. It first aired in 1998 or 99. Really? If it was 98, then I was... I was... 11 years old. So why didn't I watch it? The shows I watched when I was 11 were like, oh, no, I had Nickelodeon because I watched like Rocket Power and Rugrats and Ah Real Monsters, K. Arnold. Let's see, when I was 12 years old, though, I was watching Pokemon, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, and what was the other Toonami show that was on after all those? Uh, although Goofy Goober songs rock sponge by words, is it? The only Spongebob song I know is F is for fires that burn down towns U is for uranium BOMB N is for no survivors When you... And then Spongebob stops him. That's the only Spongebob song I know. Oh, whoops, I was supposed to go into prom board, Haha. Right? Uh -huh. Whoa, there's blood on the calendar! Photo, broken piece of glass, the lamp. This is where it happened then, last night. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place, looking for valuables. Powerpuff Girls, that's also what I was watching when I was 12. Dexter's Lab, uh, Johnny Bravo. I didn't like Cow and Chicken, I thought it was gross. Red and Stimpy was also gross. Doug. Wow. Blast from the- Look at how many, like, different shows there were, like, 20 years ago, and now it's like, what's on? What's good? Amazing World of Gumball? 
Crack of the Creek? Like, like, what else? Is Danny Phantom still going on? Ben 10 is still going on, I think. Yeah. But... Apart from the police in here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals, all dressed in black. Oi, I heard that. Johnny Bravo, it was a funny show. Oh, Inspector, um, good morning. Hmm, I suppose I have to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before I was disturbed at least. Shame we let the two rogues get away, mind. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you had signed extra men to the beat around here, Trexy. He tried dating a deer? Oh yeah, I remember. And I'm just like, is he really that stupid? Does he not realize? <laughs> He was like, he's a himbo. He means well, but he's kind of dumb. He doesn't mean to be like malicious in when he's hitting on girls. It still can come off creepy though. Ugh. Now look what's happened. herdy has been injured because there weren't enough police on duty. Ah. Your ladyship. You never told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has at least... He has the very best medical care. Of course, Your Ladyship. The very best doctors in the capital are tend to him as we speak. How about I let you hang out with me, baby? And, uh, like, every time he go went up to a girl, he's like, Hey, mama. And it's just like, ooh. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. That's also what I watched. Yeah. And I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals is the police's job. Absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, ma'am, as you say. The jet in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. Would you believe it? <laughs> He's like a completely different person with Iris. Talk about a personality change. Hey, worthy manners. Are you thirsty, your ladyship? Perhaps you'd like some juice, some nice refreshing fruit juice. Oh, uh, why? Are you thirsty, Grexy? I have some of my special herbal tea with me, if you'd like some. Glug, 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 glug. Ah, lovely! Tell me very much! That really hit a spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize it like this. The Jawbreakers, yeah! And then one time they got like the super big Jawbreakers and he's like, I'm gonna eat this, like, I'm gonna keep it in my mouth forever! And then like, it really hurts him or something. But yeah. And then editing was fun. So, how's the investi go investigation going, Inspector? Do it really very simple case this. There's some very definitive evidence. No, I need to change his voice back to lower. Otherwise the flashbacks are not gonna make sense. We're just about to charge the diver we arrested last night, in fact. Gina, you're you're going to charge her. That's right. Should be able to bring her in before the judge of Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. Her ladyship has as much as I wish I could oblige you, I'm afraid. Ah, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? How, how could you? How? How could you possibly know that? I mean, like, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yes, I remember that one too. And he lived with Eustace and Muriel. There used to be one Courage the Cowardly Dog song that I memorized for heart. But I don't remember what it is now. 
Oh man, I loved it when um, Muriel turned really young though, and she's like, I want macaroni and cheese. And he kept making it and bringing it back to her. She's like, more macaroni, more cheese, more macaroni, less cheese. And then like he keeps doing that forever, and then she's like, perfect, and throws it in his face. <laughs> I had a feeling, that's all. Remind me never to try to keep a secret from Iris. So you've arrested the two men who shot Mr. Sholmes, have you? Well, yes. They were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison? Should be. Assuming she hasn't looked at the key from the jailer, of course. Mr. Sholmes. Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What's his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's all hospital's policy. No visiting at all. Oh. The bullet must have hit an armor in his midriff. He lost a fair bit of blood. Oh no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. I don't recall a song. Oh man, there was some like kind of weird song. It like it was one of the creepy ones. You know what? All the Courage the Cowardly Dog episodes are creepy, but it was either a tablet or some kind of dude that stayed over at their house. But I don't remember exactly what it was. But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. <laughs> Ramses! Yes! It was that. <laughs> well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. We've got to stop that bleeding. But he will be alright, won't he? They'll be able to make him better. Oh, of course, your ladyship. He'll be right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Uh, how, how do I know? Well, um, uh, because, uh, of course. Ah, oh, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. We'd better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh dear, please don't die, Hurley. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operating theatre. Her ladyship. Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. Well, out with it, Sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. I'm a couple and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do treat us differently. It's because of those Adventures of Herlock Show stories. That's why. Oh. I crop up in, don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the Inspector Iris? Hmm, I don't remember really. It was one of Shows' lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month my pay doubled! Doubled, I tell you! Oh, that's amazing. All because everyone at the yard reads them. They read all the Hillock short stories. They've seen every set of fan club. They even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time that you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? All it takes is one bad word from you and Shoves could change his tune about me. Gregson? No, the great detective was saying. He's getting quite overrated these days. Think what would happen to my salary if that came out in print, eh? The whole thing gives me the willies. I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost word about it. Do you know a lot of acts um, have played the main characters, Farmer and his wife? If you... Listen from the pilot, you can hear it. Oh! Yeah, um, 
pilots usually don't have um, a lot of the final voice actors. It's just to show um, like, hey, here's our vision for the show we want to make. Here's like the characters, the vibe, the plot we're going for. Um, pilots can dra uh, differ drastically from the final product that comes out, but at least it at least gives the studio an idea of like, okay, so this is how it's going to be animated. This is how it's going to look and blah, 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 blah. So yeah. Oh, I'm so sore and stiff. I, I worked on my abs today and they hurt so much. Oof, I need to stretch. But that would never happen, Grexy. Every month when the new Rans magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some more of my tea to settle your nerves. Glug, 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 glug. As long as it's not leg cramps. Yeah, oh my gosh. Oh, lovely. Top very much. That really hit the spot, young lady. Sure. Like one time I was, um, I was sleeping. And then all of a sudden I woke up because I got crazy leg cramps. And I was like, what the heck is happening? I didn't even do anything. And it hurt so much. And I couldn't even like move my body to reach down to massage it. I couldn't try to move it. I was just like, well, this is super painful and I'm dying. So make sure you drink enough water, stretch, get some exercise. Yeah. <sighs> Tea total. Oh, yeah, there's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Nanghudu. Yes? What is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Are you going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about that young lady who's normally by your side, your sister. Dear Susie, she alright? A week ago happened to be out of the blue. It's just like, why does it happen? I was sleeping. I wasn't moving in a weird way. I wasn't trying to crack my toes, unless I was doing it in my sleep. But it's just like, why did it happen? She's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope, not anymore. She had to head off. Head off? Where? To Lord Stormheart's office, of course. He summoned her. Ah, yes, of course. I forgot about that. One of the whipstocks took her there in the yard carriage after we finished questioning her. What she asked us to tell you, she didn't have the fear for the return journey and to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blooming message and service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go see the Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me. But I'd better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. Then I guess we're done here. Do I even need to examine anything? I mean, this is obviously broken. Okay, they're not gonna say anything about it. Um, what about this whole entire countertop? Alright then, let's see what we can uncover. Boy, what do you think you're doing, Sunshine? You can't touch anything here. Oh, but we were hoping to investigate. It's a crime scene for Pete's sake. No touching. What's the problem, Gregsy? Rumor's a lawyer. You know that. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, your ladyship. Ever so sorry. The rules and regulations are thrown on my side. Of course, if Mr. Darden Hoodie was to have been properly appointed by the accused, that'd be another matter. The accused? If you could show me some representation papers, I'd be only too happy to let you nose around. Did you hear that, Runo? You need Ginny to sign some representation papers. It looks like pre presenting the detective here with the correct paperwork is the only way. Okay, so I'm eventually going to have to go back to the prison, but for now we're going to move to... Ah, stop! Uh, Lord Chief Justice's office. Do -do 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 what time is it now? It doesn't say! I'm not getting old, I'm not getting old. 
What was I saying? I forgot. <laughs> Yo, but for real, the older I get, the more easily my memory starts to like blip. So I have to write things down or else I forget it. How sad is that? Getting old. I have too much information in my head and now I can't retain anything new. Ah. Yes. No matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. Do you think the place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. So everything is clear with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust. Yes, thank you very much. There they are. Susan Dasan and Lord Strongheart. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Very good. There is nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Wait, what did he just say? Your return to your homeland? Susan-san! Clean some, uh, clean some of those anime and game of shirtless boys out and make room. <laughs> I have nothing hanging in my room. I used to have a bunch of posters, but I haven't been able to put them up for years. I'm sad. Why are there birds in here? That's disgusting. Oh, um, Mr. Naruto. What was all that about? Ah, oh, Mr. Nadhuru, thank you for coming to collect your colleague. What's all- what's this all about? Why are you talking- Wait, why were you talking about Mrs. Sato's return to her homeland? I'm sorry. <laughs> and- and... Tomorrow? Tomorrow? But what about Jenny's trial? You mean... She's been formally charged now? Oh dear. What is happening? Turning to our homeland. Mrs. Sato, what's this? What's all this about? Oh, please don't concern yourself, Mr. Nadohodo. It's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue just as it has. That's not what I asked. What happens? Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh no! Professor Mikotobo? You fall ill? Yes, sorry. You must be the defendant. You must get out of order, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. My name is Yuji Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yuba University. We received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with a fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker day by day. I... I don't believe it. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your country's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Miss Susato's departure as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, Gina's trial. So Gina has been charged. She'll have to appear in court. Yes, she was formally charged a few hours ago, and the date of the trial has already been set for tomorrow. No, not even 24 hours later? Gina? Ah, oh, the Lestrade girl in the murder of the Baker Street pawnbroker. Yes. And all 
Once in transpicuous case, the pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid robbery and shot the man in a panic. No, the yard is overstretched as it is without wasting time on these open and shot cases. It's not wasting time. Judy would never do something like that. Mr. Nodohudo. Oh, um, yes, Lord Strongheart? In deference of your fine services to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave. Now. Whoa! Rude, dude! Of course, Lord Strongheart. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to evade justice. The police can ill afford the time it takes to unravel all the, their own truths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. Then hire more police officers, duh, dummies. We have far more serious matters to which, with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes, Inspector, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. She could be your overlord someday, be careful. For real! It's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. Now! There's just one more thing, Lord Strongheart. Which is... It's Mrs. Strauss' trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. But... But that's not fair! Yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial! Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign relevant paperwork and a defense barrister will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you would well do, you would do well to direct at Miss Lestrade. You'll find her at the local prison. I've already seen her. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. What a day. Gina charged with murder? Susan Susan about to leave? I wonder what Susato means. Come, Mr. Narhoro. Iris, we must make haste. But, Susie... You are leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Narhoro's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Mr. Sato. That's a very pensive look. I think we ought to visit Gina first. In any case, I should like to wish her well before I leave. I have a feeling we're gonna go visit Gina, and Gina's gonna be like, I can't trust you, you lie about blah 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 blah, and then Susato might tell us about the real story about how she knows about the manuscripts. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can, as a lawyer. And we move to prison. Prison, thank you. Uh, they don't say the time anymore, cool. Ah! Hello again, Gina. Must we go through the song and dance every time? What are you lot here for now? To have the muzzle of that grenade launcher shoved in our faces yet again, obviously. Ooh, the sass. Hmm, I think I need to improve the way you load ammunition tech thing, don't I? Look! You can come as many times as you 
like, well, I ain't got nothing more to say to you. I can talk, blah, blah, blah. Gina, I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. What? I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Eh? Farewell? Tomorrow, I must begin my journey back home to Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Oh, right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London and so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum parting indeed. Poor Iris is so miserable. Susie. Well, well, that ain't my business. Both Iris and Mr. Matterhood have believed you to be innocent, Gina. They've put their faith in you. <coughs> but somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. Oh, guilt tripping. What? It's my fault. Yes, so I have one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross again. I feel like it's gonna cross again. Ugh. Right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Eh? Huh? Only by doing that. Will you truly be as alone as you claim to be? What are you talking about? What you expect me to do, eh? Ugh. You've told us that everyone lies. So prove it by admitting one of your own untruths. What about what you said before, Jenny? You said something about unforgivable lies. You must tell Mr. Naruhodo and Iris the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. My last request as a judicial assistant. What is happening? Is she telling her to lie or not? No, I, I can't. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Gina, I could be wrong, but... Is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? The one in which Magnus the Gilded was acquitted? Ah. Oh. The case that of that mysterious murder that took place inside the omnibus? You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? Yeah, you're right. Because, in that trial... I lied. I lied like you wouldn't believe it. Will you tell us about it now? Oh gosh, I thought it was gonna be about the manuscript, but it's gonna be all about Gina's part in the trial. Like I said, it all happened two months ago. The cop was got old me and sh got old of me and shoved me in the witness stand. And based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared innocent. Yeah, well. The thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. What sort of thing did you lie about? I was lying under a seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in that little cubby hole. I couldn't see a thing. And then... Dud. I heard that loud thud, like someone falling on the floor. And that's when Miss McGilda discovered you. Yeah. He pulled me out from under the seat and sat me next to a dead man. There weren't much light to see by, but when I looked at me hands, I had the clothes blood and all over them. So she had the blood. So she was the per a person that um the banker and the hatter saw with the blood all over them. I was so scared, I couldn't even speak. 
You had his blood on your hands. In other words, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Then, Mr. McGill had started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were, and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, he did. Only, that's not all. What do you mean? I mean he threatened me. Threatened you? How? He made me swear about what I seen, what I heard. And about what he was going to do after Cove was found dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell no one about any of it. If I did that, he said he'd let me scarp her before the copper showed up. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. What you saw, what you heard, everything. Oh, oh, oh. What you saw. You said Mr. McGilda made you swear not to tell anybody what you saw. But you were in the pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGilda sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's true, but... It was when I heard the sound... The... The... I can't read and talk. It was when I heard the third of the cove sitting, hitting the floor. I let out a little scream. See? Can't help it. Well, get the third of that and drag me out by my arm. That's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer where I'd been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? Do you mean... Yeah, that's it. The one... Uh, what? The one what the took off me at Windbanks. I don't like reading Gina's lines, the accents are so weird. So the music box this was there on the floor of the omnibus? Not for long. Mr. McGill spotted it straight away. He picked it up smart and uh, stuffed it in... Stuffed it in his inside pocket. So that disc was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of the Mr. Mason's murder. And the bulk trotter told me. I went to mutter a word of it to no one. What you heard. Cause it was so dark under that seat in this cab. I was straining my ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and the footsteps inside the cabin. Presum presumably that was Mr. McGilded getting on board. Nah, not only him. Oh. Cause I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. In that case, it would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilded and the victim. Mr. Thricefire Mason. In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGilded claimed he slept during the carriage ride. But when you remind me of carriage, I'm taking away first time this and I always should come to it. And your own testimony, Gina, supported his. Oh, it was the Irishman snoring. Yeah, that weren't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear him talking the whole time, in low voices. What? What What were they talking about? Sorry, I don't know. The sound of the horses and the wheels was too loud. But that still tells us something. Mr. McGilded and the victim knew each other. So McGilded was lying, as I suspected. After the events... I knew it wasn't going to take long before someone raised the alarm that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you were quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, McGilda told me to hide in the back, seat, back on the seat again. I climbed in and waited. Two coves from up top ran off to get the coppers. Yes, um, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Right. And after they'd gone, Gil had asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Now, damn fella, what I need you 
you do is take this code of mine and deposit it with a nearby pawnbroker. And for your troubles, let's see now. Alright, I'll give you 10 guineas. A nearby pawnbroker? You mean on Baker Street? Yep, you got it. It was Winterbanks. The coach he snapped up the money and ran off to pop this coat as fast as he could. So then there was no one left in the carriage. Mr. McGilded opened a box under the seat. And let me get out of there, but not without conditions. I see. What were Miss Gilda's conditions then? For letting you go free, I mean. Not telling a soul. Not for anything. About what I saw and what I heard. And there was something else as well. There's more? Yeah. This is the most important thing, he said. to send the coachman on a little errand for me with some small change in the sand. Now then, did you hear what I asked of him? Did you see anything at all? At all? You asked him to pop, go pop your weasel, right? Pop goes the weasel. That's the music on the disc. Aye, the fiend's taking over from the overcoat to pause it with the pawnbroker here at And they'll want you blocks to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? You want me to have the ticket? That's right, and I'll come fetch it from you later. Sometime within the next two months. Get to hang on to it until then. Is that clear? And whatever you do, don't lose it. All right then. And in case I might happen to be in delay at all, you have to go to the pawn shop, Winterbank, so it is, and you have to extend the loan of, of all, uh, the two months is up. If you forget, the article will be forfeited, and any old fiend could come along and buy it. Eh? But, but I ain't got that kind of brass. Here's five pounds. That should be enough. Do we understand each other, lass? Don't try anything funny now. If you go against me... Yeah, I get it. Good. And one more thing. In a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police, I have no doubt. The coppers? Aye. They'll come asking you to take the stand in court. To testify as a witness. So let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? What it is that you might say, and what it is that you won't. After you gone over it all, I piped it. As far away from there as I could. He hid the pawnbroker's ticket in some bushes near the scene. I went to fetch it the next day once it got dark. So Magilda planned it. And coerced Gina into giving false testimony. I bet you're ready to string me up, eh? I lied, in that big old courtroom. I told some corkers. The thing is, he said he would make it so we couldn't live in the East End no more. That's what he threatened me with. But he's dead now, so... What a wicked man! He knew everything what went in the back slums. He knew he had no one to look after us, and we was all just looking out for each other, getting by together. So you mean, Mr. McGilded would have... In an heartbeat, he could have had a lot of us chased out of there if he wanted. And then where would we have gone, eh? Nowhere, that's where. So, I didn't have no choice. Thank you, Gina, for telling us everything. But, I'm for it now, eh? Go on, admit it, you must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favor. A favor? What? Sign the representation papers for tomorrow's trial. Eh? If you don't actually want me to represent you in court, you can rip it up later. 
But we need that paperwork or we can't investigate. The police won't let us. Investigate what? The scene of the incident last night. Mr. Scholes was shot, you see. You what? Hurley's having a big operation right now, Jenny. It's bad? It, is it gonna be alright? Scholes is gonna be alright! Right? right? That's why I want to investigate, for Mr. Scholes' sake as much as anything. Right. So what you're saying is, if I sign that bit of paper, everyone's happy, is that it? Something like that. M uh, Mr. Soto? Yes, of course! I have the representation papers here. Blah, 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 blah. What about the truth about the manuscripts? I... I don't need no one to stickle for me, though. No lawyer or nothing. No one's going to believe you if you represent yourself, so you better get me to represent you. Poor Jenny. She seems so lonely. Gina's representation papers have been entered. Yay! Well, at least this should mean we can investigate the scene at Windebanks now. Yes, and perhaps we can come back to visit Jenny when we're done there. I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's opened up to us at last. <laughs> crack Gretchen Wieners and we crack her. Say crack again. Crack! <laughs> and now I have her representation papers. No one else knows just what a responsibility that is. Anyway, for now it means Inspector Gregson can't stop us investigating at Windebanks. Although, something tells me he's not going to be happy about it. To be continued! Oh, this is perfect timing because I was thinking that I was getting really tired, so like, I wanted to stop soon. My throat is also getting like very dry and scratchy, even though I have some water with me. So this is a perfect place to stop. So I'm guessing next time we will um, investigate Windebanks, go back and talk with uh, Jenny about the events that happened there. Maybe, hopefully, finally, Susato will tell us about the manuscripts. But that's all for next time. Yeah, I hope I will be able to stream on schedule and yeah, should be able to see you on Tuesday. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty, have a good night, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.